Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we're going to do an Athlon Cronus Gen 2 spotting scope review. We're going to go over some of the changes that Athlon Optics made on this Cronus Gen 2 spotting scope. They changed quite a few things here, so I want to show those to you and go over some of the differences and help you decide if it's right for you. They did change quite a few things here. We're also going to throw the digiscope on here and show you the through the lens look on this new Gen 2 Cronus spotting scope. So I always really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our website, backwardspursuit.com. There's a ton of gear reviews over there. Put links to all that down in the description as well as a link to the Athlon Cronus Gen 2 spotting scope so you can check it out for yourself. Let's get started. All right, to get started, let's take a look at some of the specs of the Athlon Cronus Gen 2 spotting scope. You have a 20 to 60 magnification range, 86 millimeter objective, You've got an ARCA compatible, ARCA direct foot here, so you don't need a base plate, which is really nice. Of course, you have a rotating collar here, so if you need to, do, to change the angle when you have that on top of, the, of a tripod or whatnot, that enables you to do that and then lock that down into place. Very nice there, 16.2 inches in length. So it is on the longer side, but it is an 86 millimeter spotting scope. So you do have something that's larger and heavier than certainly one of your ultralight style uh, spotting scopes. Now the, the body here is made of magnesium chassis. So it does help us keep some of the weight down given the size, but it is again, still a pretty heavy spotting scope. Now it has Bach 4 prisms and UHD glass, which does a really nice job of color contrast and color rendition. Really good clarity as well, we found. The eye relief that you get here is 18 to 20 millimeters, so very good eye relief in this spotting scope. Very impressive that way. And the field of view is 111 feet at 1,000 yards at the 20x in magnification. If you go up to 60x, that goes down to 60 feet at 1,000 yards. So pretty in line with the industry standard as far as the field of view uh, that you get with the various magnifications. A few more of the physical features. The eye cup here is a really nice eye cup. I've always been impressed with the way Athlon does their eye cups. It's not real bulky or whatnot. It has very, very smooth and no play in the eye cup. So I really appreciate that. Again, rotating collar there. Now, one of the changes that they made on this Gen 2 model is they went to a barrel focus. The barrel focus is very, very smooth and free flowing. Some barrel focuses uh, are quite a bit more stiff than this. This is nice and smooth and free flowing. And that is really important when you put this on top of a tripod to reduce vibration. Now, I was personally a little bit bummed when they went away from the dual focus that the Gen 1 had and went with this barrel focus because I really liked the dual focus system. So I wish they would have kept that, but this, this is, if you're gonna have a barrel focus, it is a, a, one of the better bar barrel focuses that we've tested here. It's just very, very smooth and, and very free flowing, which is what I like in a barrel focus system. Now, another one of the changes, they went to an ARCA direct foot here. You don't need a base plate anymore. The Gen 1, you did need a base plate. I love that. It just reduces that extra bulk that you can have by putting a base plate on there. Now, if you need uh, more adjustment, more length in a base plate, you can go ahead and stick another one on there, but they do provide a nice uh, ARCA direct foot there for you. So that is really, really nice. Really like that. You have four click stop adjustments here on the eyepiece to maximize that eye relief that we talked about, that 18 to 20 millimeters, and nice firm eyepiece, so it's not gonna move on you. There's plenty of resistance there for you, which really, really is nice with this Gen 2 model as well. Now, other changes, the overall size got a little bit bigger, unfortunately, on this model. It is now 16.2 inches in length, so a little bit longer, a little bit heavier as well. Just over 73 ounces now. The other one was under 70 ounces. So you gained a little bit of weight there, which again was not something that I was excited about. But you do get an increase in optical performance in this one over the previous model, which is where that payoff comes, particularly at the, the reduced price, which is really surprising of this. The price point came down and some of the, the performance features here went up. So some of the changes that they made made it more cost effective and increase some of the performance. So that was, that was great. And obviously you have a complete redesign in the overall look and feel of this spotting scope. The last one had an eyepiece that kind of sunk down into this portion, so made it shorter in length and a little more compact, better for coming in and out of a backpack. But with some of the changes they made here, 
it really brought this back into line with the other Gen 2 options that Athlon Optics offers. So a lot of great changes and then a couple that I wasn't real excited about as well. Now, one of the biggest things that I wanted to see with this Gen 2 for me was what did they do with the eyepiece? The Gen 1, while very, very good in optical performance and really one of the top performance in its price uh, category, it, but it didn't have a wide angle eyepiece. So I was really hoping that the Gen 2 had a wide angle eyepiece, but unfortunately it does not. So they stayed with the standard eyepiece. Still a good field of view, but that wide angle or the lack of that wide angle eyepiece still makes it look a little bit more like you're looking through a tunnel than some of the wide angle options out there. So be aware of that. It doesn't reduce, of course, the optical performance and you don't notice it nearly as much if you go up to some of the higher magnifications. It's just when you're at that lower magnifications, you can, you can tell that you're in a, 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 almost looking like you're looking through a tunnel of some kind. And that's very similar to the Gen 1 model. So nothing changed there. I was really hoping that that was a change that was gonna be made, but unfortunately it wasn't. All right, so how did this thing perform for us? We put this next to some much more expensive spotting scopes because I wanted to see how this would stand up to some of the competition. The ones we put this next to is the, uh, the Tract Toric UHD, which is in that $1,500 price range. Also put this next to the Koa TSN 88A, which is obviously quite a bit more expensive, about three times as expensive as this one. So, but I was still curious how this would perform uh, because this is such a great value at its its current price of right around $1,000, a little bit over that MSRP. So uh, at current price, just a fantastic value. So how it performed, low light, it be, because of this larger objective, the 86 millimeter objective, it did a little bit better than the Track Torque. That's an 80 millimeter objective, but it pulled in that light just a little bit better and had a little bit better low light performance than the Track Torque. And it had a little bit better edge to edge clarity. The edge to edge clarity, on this for a $1,000 uh, category type of spotting scope is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, way, way above it performance uh, versus what the price point is here. Edge edge clarity was extremely good. Very little degradation in the image towards the edge of the field of view, which was a huge surprise. I was expecting there to be quite a bit more loss of clarity the edge to edge in this spotting scope. So a huge win there. Uh, clarity was, was really, really fantastic. It, it was right on par with those much more expensive spotting scopes. Uh, again, low light was, was very good. It was not as good in low light as the Koa TSN 88. Again, that's to be expected. That's a much, much more expensive spotting scope and a little bit bigger objective in an 88 versus this 86. So that makes sense. But for the price point, absolutely phenomenal. Now, one of the areas that this didn't excel quite as well in was the color contrast. Uh, the, both the Tract and that uh, uh, Koa spotting scopes had a little deeper blacks and those, those colors and the color contrast were a little bit deeper, a little bit more rich than they were in this one, but still again, a very, very good performer and for the price point, absolutely phenomenal in its performance. Now, one thing we did notice when looking through this is that the edges of the field of view, when you're looking through the spotting scope, the black edges uh, that as you approach the, the outside of the field of view, that black edge isn't super crisp. It doesn't affect the, the image clarity or the, the field of view whatsoever, but we just noticed it wasn't a nice crisp edge around that field of view. So that was interesting. It didn't really affect anything, but just something that we noticed. I wanted to pass that along in our testing. And we had this of course out in the field, doing some side-by-sides with that track toric. We had it up doing some shed hunting and looking for some deer and elk. All right, so I grabbed the Athlon Cronus spotting scope here and set it atop the Athlon Cronus a CF40 tripod, super stable tripod. And I was able to find some deer out there about 3,000 yards away on the hillside, so we can see a long ways away. We're gonna take a look at these through the phone here to give you an idea of what you're gonna see if you look through this. Now we're at 20X to start. As you can see, there's some deer on the hillside there right in the middle of the center of the image. Uh, you can see that I've got the, the, the zoom backed off on the phone so you can see the edge to edge clarity is really, really good on this. Uh, nice color rendition as well. So let's go ahead and pull this into the 60X so you can get a real good look at those deer. I'm gonna go ahead and refocus this for you. And as you can tell, you got really nice image. Even at 60X, it's very, very usable. You have a real nice clean image and you have still really good edge to edge clarity even at the top end of the magnification. As you can see, this performs really well even at higher magnification, gives you really good edge to edge clarity. Really impressed with how well this performs given its particular price point. Right now, some of the pros and cons that we came up with after testing this out in the field and next to a bunch of others. We loved the iCup, very smooth, very well built, 
and gives you those four quick stops, tons of eye relief. Really liked that, really liked how smooth the barrel focus system is. Love the addition of the Arca Direct foot plate here. That's fantastic. Edge-to-edge uh, -edge clarity in the optical performance department. Edge-to-edge -edge clarity is awesome with this. Image clarity is fantastic. Um, the overall uh, performance optically is way above its price point. It's just a phenomenal performer in that regard. There's a lot to love about this. A couple of things I didn't love quite so much that they went away from the dual focus system and went to a barrel focus. I wish they would have stuck with that. Um, I wish they would have added that wide angle eyepiece. That's something that I really love in a spotting scope. Wish it was there, but again, it's right in line with the previous model of the Athlon Cronus. Um, the focus mechanism here was an upgrade, though it is even smoother than the previous model, so that's really nice as well. The length got a little bit longer, uh, which is not uh, awesome, and the weight got a little bit, uh, they add a little bit of weight to this model at over 73 ounces, so it's definitely a heavier spotting scope, which is not awesome if you're wanting to, something that you're gonna be able to pack around the mountains. Definitely go with a smaller model like the Ares 65 millimeter, something of that nature. The eye box on this is a little less forgiving than some of the other options that we uh, uh, tested out there, meaning you have to have your, your eye positioned a little more precisely with this than some of the others out there. So if you don't, then you're gonna find yourself with some of those black spots or whatnot. So it can be a little bit harder to stay in the scope for a longer period of time if you're gonna be moving around or kind of scanning and that sort of thing. So you, it's a little bit more or a little bit less user-friendly in that regard. Um, again, a lot of spotting scopes are like that, so it's not uncommon, but just thought I would note that also. So that is the Athlon Cronus Gen 2 spotting scope. Again, it's a 20 to 60 by 86 millimeter spotting scope. So it's on the big side at, and the heavy side at over 73 ounces. Not really something you're gonna pack around the mountains very much, but given its price point, right around that $1,000 area, it is absolutely a phenomenal performer. It's hands down the best $1,000 performer that I've ever looked through and tested. So if you're in that market and don't wanna spend a fortune on a spotting scope, but still want phenomenal performance, definitely check this out. Put a link to this down in the, in the description for you so you can check it out for yourself and drop any questions or comments for us. We'd love to help you out if we can. Thanks for watching.